My name is Joachim Abartidis, and I'm a second year PhD student at the Institute of Child Health under the supervision of Dr. Gabriel Gallia and Professor Paolo de Coppi. Today's presentation is going to be focusing on modeling neural tube closure cell behaviors in human neuroepithelium like sheets. But to begin with, we need to understand how the neural tube is formed, and this is a process that takes place in the first month of gestation, where we begin with the flat epithelium, which bends and elevates over time, giving rise to the neural tube. A very important cell behavior found there is the apical constriction, which is nothing but the squeeze of the apical area of the cell in order to transmit that wave forces across the epithelium. Here we have, of course, the neural tube. Now, this has two main functions. One is the closure itself of the neural tube, but also the differentiation into different types of neurons. And as we know, failure in any of these stepwise process results into a physical gap and a neural tube failure to close. Now this gives rise to a spectrum of disorders termed as neural tube defects or NTDs, which have a prevalence rate one in 1,000 pregnancies. Here you can see a mouse embryo and an open physical region of the neural tube from here in cyan, and this is termed as open spina bifida. And this presentation has a great time as this week is a spina bifida awareness week, and it's something also to bear in mind. Now, our lab and others have previously shown that quantifiable biomechanical abnormalities result into failure of neural tube closure. For example, failure of vertebral constriction gives rise to spina bifida. Now, this is understudy in human models, and I've studied a differentiation of using human-induced preponderant stem cells and a dual smart distribution protocol in order to generate a neuroepithelium. And of course, we want to compare that with the in vivo reference, which is the neural tube itself. But in order to understand that, we need to first of all understand what are the behaviors that are in the neuroepithelium. Now, we know that this is a polarized epithelium with an optical and basal side, shown here in red and green, respectively. And in our system, we've been able to see over the course of eight days, apical basal elongation of the epithelial sheets but also you can appreciate the enrichment of the F actin on the one side, indicating the apical side, but also the polarization of the epithelium. In addition to that, we know that the neuroepithelium is pseudostratified, meaning that we see multiple rows of nuclei by a single apical and basal side. And these nuclei also undergo interkinetic nuclear migration, which is the translocation of them from the apical to the basal side. In our system, doing 3D reconstruction over live imaging of the nuclei, we can see the arrangement of the nuclei of this compacted epithelium by day eight with an approximate nuclear index of N of three. Now, as any tissue, there are specific markers found there, like SOX2 and CDH2, and lack of others, like Brachiri and laminin C. Now, again, we've been able to see adherent junction maturation, like n cadherin which is a neuroepithelial marker, a very specific one, maybe, but also we've been able to validate for the first time in vitro loss of laminin C, which is a nuclear envelope marker and it's been associated with nuclear stiffness. Now, overall, this epithelium is very well characterized with specific cell behaviors involved there. And what I'm interested in is the optical constriction, as I mentioned before, which is the universal portionary mechanism. Now, we know that for optical constriction, which is a force, in order to, that to be mediated, we need the mediators, which is the F actin and the phosphomyosin. Thus, we've been able to validate phosphomyosin enrichment on the optical side. Now we want to dynamically assess that, and we did laser ablations, and here you can see the high magnitude retraction of the epithelium and how fast that retracts over live imaging and laser ablations. Our lab previously has shown a new cell behavior of the neuroepithelium, which is the synchronization of the optical restriction to the cell cycle progression. Thus, in order to validate that, we did gain a sample with KS67, which has a distinct pattern across the cell cycle stages. For example, in G1, we have a salt and pepper pattern, as you can see, whereas in G2, we have a single functor in the nucleus. I've simply stained my samples with f actin and KS67 and using high resolution microscopy. You can see the single apical areas of cells, but also you can appreciate the different cell cycles uh, with the staining of KS67. Now, I've manually measured that, and you can see, we can see an increase of G2 apical areas of cells, shown here the median apical area, and I've been able to validate that in three replicates, in three independent cell lines. But we can also see a G22M phase optical constriction overall, which can be summarized into that schematic here. So overall, we've translated in vivo findings of the neuroepithelia 
in an in vitro system, which is human based for the first time. But not only that, we have applied this system now and used IPSCs derived from an individual affected by spina bifida. And here, if anything, we've been able to validate our model and seeing higher magnitude of spina bifida, sorry, higher magnitude G2 dilation of the spina bifida cell line, validating our system, but also giving us greater insight for further experiments and other cell lines that weren't tested. Thank you very much for your attention. I'll be more than happy to answer any questions and comments over the post session.